Okay, well, I had kind of a full circle question. Um, we started off the podcast, and you're talking about the scene in the early '90s, late '80s. Uh, what are your thoughts on the local scene now? Uh, it's a lot more fragmented now. Like, yes, there used to be like a small number of venues that almost all different kinds of bands would play at, and so the bands were very fraternal. And even bands that weren't stylistically that close to each other would often like share a rehearsal space or like be comrades in one way or another, like work at the same bar or whatever. And now it seems like um, because the things like the internet make it possible for you to stay entirely within your own interests all day, every day, there's there's less cross-pollination pollinization than there was in the 80s and 90s. It seems like bands are interacting with each other less and they tend to stick to themselves more. Yeah, we. I mean, we started playing shows downtown a few years ago and I was really surprised that we weren't able to hop right into a scene. It was just like, you know, uh, bands don't even seem to be that interested in getting that going. Yeah, it's less of a... It seems like there's less of a fraternity of, of musicians than there was. A lot of it had to do with, like, there were these kind of groups of bands that were like sort of regional like you know all these bands from this neighborhood or all these bands from this neighborhood or whatever and they would hang out at the same bars and they would like interact with each other you know fuck each other's girlfriends that kind of thing like there there was more of a social network of bands as peers right now it seems very much like bands are well to to a greater degree it seems like bands are kind of defining themselves, staking out their territory, and this is us, and this is, you know, we're soldiers against the world or whatever the hell it is. And that and so, like, bands are... It seems like they're being a lot more, like, insular and a lot more isolated from each other. Yeah, I think it's that's It's kind of bad. ironic because now it's a lot more popular with the social networking stuff. Yeah, but the back thing... Back then, it, you didn't have that. Right. Well, that's the, the, the point, is that back then, you had to bump into a lot of people in order to find your friends, and now... It, because of all the internet connectivity, you can have friends all over the world without ever leaving your room, you know, and you're only ever, you, if you choose to only ever interact with people who are on World of Warcraft and also into, like... Hentai or something, yeah. <coughs> yeah, or, <laughs> or vegan necromancy or whatever, then you can pretty much sculpt your life so that you only ever interact with those people. It's a very narrow That's thing, true, you know. Yeah. It's quite possible. But that didn't used to be the case. So you used to have to rub elbows more. When I first came to Chicago in 1980, um and I got involved in the music scene here, the thing that struck me most about the music scene and the thing that made it seem so important to me was that the punk scene at the time was a completely unfiltered cross-section of the part of the spectrum of humanity that didn't fit in anywhere, right? So you have all the professional people and college students and, you know, comfortable family people and people settled in their lives. And then you have the faggots and the petty criminals and the dope fiends and, the you know, the guys just out of jail and the recent recent immigrants and the runaways. And, you know, you have like this... All these people who don't have any connection, don't have any foothold in the real world, and all of those people were represented in the punk scene. Like, you would see, like, actual for real petty criminals and prostitutes and dope fiends and college professors and, like, Dungeons and Dragons geeks and, like, you just, like, the strangest fucking collection of people you can imagine. People, you know, mildly schizophrenic people, you know, Asperger's syndrome spectrum people. Like, like this whole, that, that was, that was the, the, the fraternity of the punk rock scene was all of these people who didn't have a fucking hope anywhere else like that was it that was their entire their entire scene it was going to be all these other people that couldn't cope you know mm-hmm. and that seemed it seemed like it validated that whole end of the spectrum to me it seemed like it made all of these like unwanted and uh unlikable people you know it it made it t- it took them seriously it made them legitimate and that's why I mean, and I f- I felt totally comfortable, totally at home there. I I was kind of a a, a loner, outsider, weirdo, geek, and I I felt like comfortable in the music scene in Chicago, in the punk scene. 
And I think as music has progressed and evolved, the there there really hasn't been a need for a catch-all idiom anymore, you know? And there's it seems like everybody is now now can sort of comfortably slot into subgenres whereas that didn't really that didn't really wasn't right. really the case then and like i said it, people had to work a lot harder to make friendships and and peers peer relationships because you literally physically had to go out and meet people yeah, in order to do it yeah. you know get actually get out there well, that's a real depressing note to end on. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. We try to do the same thing, though. We start at the streets of No, I, I, I have to it. say, though, I mean, having seen the music scenes in other cities, like in other parts of the world and in other parts of the country, Chicago is still an order of magnitude more collaborative and more cooperative and more fraternal than places like New York or London or Zurich or whatever. Like those places, People really are hived off into separate little warrens and will never see each other and never meet, you know, never interact with each other. Chicago is still an order of magnitude better than those places. Is that sort of why you set up shop in uh, Chicago? I know you went to Northwestern, but I mean, is that. I mean, it was kind of an accident that I ended up here because I went to school at Northwestern and when I finished college, I just stayed here. It's kind of an accident, but I can't think of a better place. You know, it's it's a, a, a totally great city on every on every level. It's huge. There's an enormous diversity of people. There's, you know, there's good food here. You know, uh, there, the, the infrastructure of the city is not really that supportive of the music scene. Like we talked before, the task cam was rolling about the uh, the way the the bar scene was set up. Like the city makes it very difficult to open a bar with live music, and I think part of that is done because they don't. I think part of that is due to the influence of some of the churches uh, that, you know, see alcohol as a bad thing. And part of it is influence of people who own liquor licenses now that they're scarce means that they're printing money hand over fist. And that's really good for them. And they have a lot of political influence. Mm -hmm. So there, there, there are things structurally about the city that make it kind of awkward. But if there's anything that's true about Chicago is that everybody finds a way to get by. You know, like you always... You know, there are a lot of basements here, so there's almost always a place to practice. There are a lot of bungalows, and bungalows have basements, and that means that there are places to practice, you know. And so bands will always have be able to find a place to practice, at, either at a rented house or at a friend's house or whatever. And the, there aren't that many places to play in Chicago, but there are some places to play, and people can always put put together makeshift gigs and stuff. So it, it's a there's a lot of stuff that you can do in Chicago that's much more difficult in a smaller town. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do in Chicago that's that, for whatever reason, is frowned on in more cosmopolitan cities like Los Angeles and, and New York. You know, you just don't get the sort of feeling of of f friendliness or openness in those cities. Mm -hmm. 